We were riding in rice country for 10,000 years. People have been doing rice here, growing it, trading it, surviving on it. Half the planet lives on less than $2 a day, as did most of the people that we met in the countryside. We were heartened that those we met were always friendly and eager to share with us. We were an attraction wherever we went. One night we pitched our tent by a weather-worn temple. In no time a crowd showed up marveling at our aluminum tent poles, our multi-speed bicycles, and our white skin. We learned of the greenspirational story of biogas in the Chinese countryside, where poop is recognized as the valuable resource it is. In villages around the Chinese countryside, five million small-scale, self-built digesters turn human and animal waste into methane gas, or natural gas, for cooking, lighting, and heating water. Not only that, it protects forests from being chopped down for firewood, and the liquid that remains is rich in nutrients and is used for irrigation. We, we have a five-year plan. By the, by the year of 2002, we will install 300,000 biogas in schools. First, we can solve the, the energy problem, and second, we will reduce the damage to the forests, and then we will have a good um, ecological recycle. China is a bicycle mecca, but as wealth increases, people are yearning for the status of owning a car. As the Chinese government partners with Western car companies, so too comes air pollution, death, injury, and noise from cars. The cacophony of honking cars in Chinese cities was unnerving. In Nanning, they banned honking, and the city is more peaceful and attractive because of it. If you're caught honking, you get a warning. Caught again, you get a ticket. A third offense, and you face the ultimate embarrassment. You have to apologize on television. Crossing the Chinese border into Vietnam, we found the Vietnamese animated and jovial. In the countryside, the bicycle ruled. But in the capital of Hanoi, we learned the government considers bicycles a, quote, primitive mode of transportation. Once famed for its quiet, tree-lined streets, Hanoi, up until the early 1990s, relied on sustainable modes of transportation, walking and cycling. By the time we arrived in 98, the streets were a noisy and stressful tangle of walkers, cycles, pedal-powered cyclo taxis, and careening motorcycles and honking cars. On some streets, the humble cyclos are banned altogether. One pleasant oasis from the bustle and jostle of Hanoi streets was the bridge over the Red River. What seemed like a never-ending flow of bicycles crossed the muddy river and reminded us of how pleasant it could be without cars and motorcycles. Instead of going to a suburban mall to do your shopping, like most do in North America, in Hanoi, the basket of goods comes to you. Just step outside your door and vendors selling food, trinkets, flowers and clothes will find their way to you. Shopping made easy. We visited the diverse Kuk Fung National Park. This is not a snowstorm. These are butterflies, and we had to keep our mouths shut or choke. In the park, we met up with the German Kilo Nadler, who introduced us to the primate rescue center he founded to protect monkeys from the Chinese traditional medicine trade. We started 1993 to improve the protection from the national park and during my stay in the first months we confiscated two very rare and endangered uh, monkeys. This is the main purpose uh, for all captured monkeys to prepare traditional Chinese medicine. 
habitat uh, destruction going ahead very fast, very heavy, high hunting pressure. And uh, the, the situation in the national park, it's very, very bad. We have to go two ways. The first way is to improve the ranger work. We have to enforce the law, but for the second way, I think we have not so much time. It is education program for the for the villagers around the protected areas and national parks. Riding during the rice harvest on streets paved with gold was blissful. This crowd gathered to greet us, and we serenaded them with some North American folk songs. <laughs> the kids especially seemed entranced by our gear and our strange behavior. We were saddened to see the diminished stature of the bicycle in Vietnam, and mourned the fact that Asian cities seemed destined to abandon their footsteps and simple bicycle technology to follow the polluted car path of western cities. With the earth groaning under the stress from 500 million cars, the last thing we need is more motor vehicles. But we returned to North America with new inspiration. We had seen the simplicity of China's biogas solution. We had met with innovators showing the way to dramatic reductions in our need for fossil fuels. We spoke with the pioneers who were showing us how to make the transition to more use of solar energy. We had walked the car-free streets of Lama Island and met with dynamo activists and thinkers who are sharing inspiring stories and strategies. And we found friendliness and curiosity wherever we roamed. Will it be enough and soon enough to save our planet from irreversible damage? Who knows, but it's heartening to know that people and communities around the world are experimenting with ways of living in harmony with the Earth. And as these ideas and initiatives are cross-pollinated, they may sprout up in new and unexpected places. And with some water, sunlight, and public support, they just may grow. Just, just maybe. maybe.